Now, at the start of the month, uh, this is June, New Zealand venison had been given the green light to enter China again, bringing relief for Kiwi exporters since the COVID-19's lockdown at the end of March. Sales were halted in the week uh, sorry, in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, with China clamping down on the sale of wild animal meat, despite New Zealand's venison coming from farm deer. This blanket ban had a direct impact on exporters here. Now, joining us for a bit of an update is CEO for Deer Industry New Zealand, Innes Moffat. Good evening, Innes. Good evening, Sarah. Uh, you'd be very proud to know that uh, your deer farmers are not only watching, but uh, proudly ac- uh, advocating for Savina. <laughs> That's nice to hear. We are very proud of the Savina brand. Um, it's stood the industry in good stead over the years. Um, and we, we still use it um, in North America and recently have uh, launched it in Europe as well. Um, and so we are trying to make the very best use of that asset that the industry has. Let's talk about China. How is the situation looking now? It's certainly improved on what it was the last time we spoke and from a couple of months ago. Um, there was a great deal of uncertainty amongst uh, Chinese importers and also um, import officials around the status of venison. Um, so it was really good that the Chinese central government um, put uh, red deer or malu on the list of approved species which can be grown for food. Um, and so that has really clarified um, the the import route for um, for New Zealand farm raised venison. Um, sales will take some time to recover. Um, uh, it is a development a developing market for us, uh, but at least we have that option now. Does that really put uh, emphasis on the point that we're talking about today in terms of storytelling uh, and uh, brand around how New Zealand's deer? is very different. I mean, we're talking a massive market when it comes to China, not an easy job. No, no, I don't think we have any aspiration of um, convincing 1.3 billion people uh, of the difference between wild deer and uh, New Zealand farm raised venison. Um, But we can target chefs, we can target specific regions within China. Uh, One of the things that we've been doing over the last month has been working with um, chefs who cook in a, about six or seven different regional styles, and just getting them to experiment with venison, seeing how it's different from their expectations and seeing which styles of Chinese cuisine actually suit our uh, our venison. Of course, the common perception is that wild deer is very strong, it's very gamey, you've got to overcome that strong flavour with strong spices. So it's been a real revelation for these Chinese chefs that our venison is it's mild in flavour, it's very, very soft, it's tender, uh, and they can treat it a lot more kind of like you would uh, tend to be for maybe even some of the heartier types of fish, um, which is um, how, how venison can show off, its very, uh, show off its very best attributes. Now, of course, COVID has opened up the opportunity for the health conscious consumer. And uh, I was actually mentioning to young Joel here, who probably doesn't need it just yet, but about the benefits of deer velvet in us. How has, uh, of course, the demand in Southeast Asia been through COVID and, and post with your crystal well, ball? If Joel, is, <laughs> if Joel is feeling a little peaky because of the winter flu or um, uh, has, been, has been doing a lot of exercise, then deer velvet will certainly help him. Uh, its primary use in Asia is uh, to boost the immune system um, and also to um, improve athletic performance. So, you know, maybe maybe he can take a little bit a little bit just to help him through the winter. Um, with the upcoming velvet season, there's some there's some a degree of nervousness about the the robustness of the consumer demand in China and in uh, the Republic of Korea. Um, neither country is is through the COVID um, uh, experience yet, um, but again, um, sales of velvet did go very well last year. Um, stocks are largely cleared out of New Zealand. So we're looking forward to it, but we're not necessarily expecting a huge a huge boost in demand um, in the year ahead. So it's probably steady as she goes. New Zealand is world leading in our deer research in us. What are some of those uh, latest research projects that uh, are starting to get to the point of some interesting findings? Yeah. One of the things that we're really excited about, which the researchers have just completed, is the um, heritability of the um, Kala gene, um, which provides a certain degree of resilience or resistance to internal parasites. Um, so they've proven that it's highly heritable in deer, and breeders 
will be able to begin selecting some of their deer with the Kala gene, uh, which will help improve their, 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 re their resistance to internal parasites, which will have some fairly significant um, uh, benefits for animal health and growth rates and the productivity of our deer. Uh, so that's just been released. Um, it will be one of the topics which will be covered in more detail uh, during our, our um, online conference presentations, which will be occurring over the next three weeks. Mm. Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Yeah, let's talk about that. I'm very excited to be uh, hosting and emceeing and my favourite uh, wonderful industry organisation of deer industry. We've pivoted, uh, like everybody else, to host this online. Yep. What can people uh, learn from the conference at Gender over the three weeks starting next Tuesday? Well, very excited. We're very pleased that uh, you uh, you can join us with that as well, Sarah. So over the next three weeks, um, for about an hour or an hour and a half uh, each Tuesday, uh, beginning at 1 p.m., we'll have a series of short, sharp presentations from a number of the different staff and executive within Deer Industry New Zealand. So we'll be covering off some of our marketing activity. Um, we are also inviting the venison marketers to come along and participate and answer people's questions um, online. Uh, we'll have some presentations from um, some of our ag research scientists around Carla, uh, around a new piece of research on velvet composition um, showing that there's been quite a dramatic improvement in the composition of New Zealand uh, velvet antler uh, because of their improved nutrition and um, improved um, animal uh, management. Um, we'll be hearing from our environmental um, manager around uh, our, our response to the freshwater management proposals. Um, there's some good news in there for deer farmers, but there will remain some challenges for all land users as we come to grips with both the national policy statement and also how that's going to be implemented within each of the regions. Um, and we're going to be hearing from quite a few people who have been involved in the Passion to Profit program uh, over the last couple of years. Um, the P2P has had some really good impacts with uh, farmers' enthusiasm for uh, adopting new practices, particularly around the improvement of nutrition for deer, um, the adoption of um, some better animal health management uh, practices. Uh, but over the last couple of years, we have begun to swing towards uh, a large emphasis on environmental management. So we'll be hearing from some people who are in our um, dairy industry environment groups, how they've gone about working with other farmers to um, collate their environment plans um, and some of the actions that they've then put in place which have improved their, their land management. Now, and as to, to close, I mean, I've always loved the term passion to profit. And uh, you have a burgeoning young next generation coming through the industry. To close the show, we're going to be speaking to Hamish Murray around this whole point of uh, bridging the communication gap between the uh, the boomers uh, and this younger generation coming through. I certainly know that's something that's been of the focus of the Deer Industry Organisation for quite some years. Are you concerned or are you excited about what's coming through? Um, oh, look, we're really excited about the, the next generation who's coming through, who, who share that passion for deer, um, who see the opportunities uh, that deer can provide as part of an integrated, um, integrated farming operation. Um, certainly there's an enormous amount of enthusiasm for velvet antler amongst a lot of the next generation because it's a real point of difference. Um, and farmers take a great deal of pride in growing and looking after their animals and producing something which is really valued um, in those Asian markets. Um, obviously, all of our agricultural industries um, want to be able to recruit and retain highly skilled and motivated staff. It's, uh, it will be a challenge, but it's, it's nice to see the Ministry for Primary Industries is really going to be putting a big effort into um, encouraging people to uh, join the agricultural sector. Um, and you know, we're looking at working more closely with some of the um, educational institutions to give them a better view of uh, what the deer industry has to offer. Maybe not as a as a job for with a small organisation like DINS, but fitting DARE into their broader understanding about New Zealand's unique agricultural system. Fantastic. For all of those of you listening and watching that, uh, I can tell you that the Deer Industry Conference always has quite a wide range of speakers, not specifically just all about deer. Head to deernz.org uh, and you can get all the details from Tuesday onwards, every Tuesday for the next three weeks. This is Sarah's Country.